We are here to celebrate and kick off and execute the Cajun Code Fest, which is just a phenomenal gathering. Uh, it's been convened by Lafayette uh, of uh, amazing developers, entrepreneurs, public health experts, uh, doctors, nurses, patient advocates from across the country and the world uh, to uh, compete over the next 36 hours in teams to develop the best solutions powered by data that help contribute to the fight against childhood obesity. And essentially what we do here is we try to take a problem, in this case they're focusing on childhood obesity, and we're using uh, data from our own State Department of, of Health and Hospitals. And we have these coders, these computer programmers, who are coming together to try to come up with solutions to address that problem. And it's a competition. Uh, the winner gets a significant financial uh, a prize, and the winning team will also uh, uh, be fed at the White House. The best part to me, the best part to me, is events like this, right? Because basically, <laughs> You came out of nowhere, as far as I'm concerned, right? I mean, I love Bruce. I came down to hang out with Bruce and his team. There's so much awesomeness happening, by the way, here in Louisiana. It's a real model for the country in so many respects, including this one, but many other respects as well. Uh, I talked about Health Data Liberacion, right? Zach started saying Liberacion. Ramesh, like God, said, we're going to do a code fest in Lafayette. I said, that's fantastic, right? I wasn't sure what happened next. Next thing I know, Ramesh calls and says, there are 300 people convening in Lafayette with the support of the entire community and an arsenal of companies with huge amounts of data, not just from HHS, but from the state and other sources, to focus in an epic code fest on building solutions that can help contribute to the fight against child obesity. I said, what? <laughs> this is fantastic. This is fantastic. And this is why I'm so optimistic about America right now, why I'm so optimistic about our fight to solve our biggest challenges. Because if there's, there's only one thing I really learned as a private sector entrepreneur. And so I had, I had some success as a private sector entrepreneur. My company, Athena Health, went public for a billion dollars. It's now worth 2.7 billion. Of course, I've divested. When you join the US government, you have to sell everything. You can't own anything, anything anymore. So I'm fully divested. Um, Castlight Health was actually uh, the second company I co-founded was named by the Wall Street Journal as the number one venture-backed company in America, uh, 2011. Uh, Health Point Services Company India was named by India as the top social innovation in the health space uh, last year. Actually, both HealthPoint and Athena Health were named by MIT recently as two of the top 50 most innovative companies in the world. And there is one reason why that's true, why all that success happened. It's not me, okay? It's definitely not me. It's that I understood one rule, which is the following. If you get the best people, you win. If you don't, it becomes much more difficult, <laughs> right? The same thing is true of ecosystems. The same thing is true of ecosystems. If we can attract the best people on the planet to help us solve our problems, there is no problem America can't invent its way out of. No problem we can't invent our way out of. And that is what I'm so excited about, because this represents that principle in action. We are attracting the best people in the world to care about the problem of child obesity and come up with some breakthrough, some beginning of a breakthrough that can make a big difference in the fight. And beyond whatever you invent today, I hope you just get addicted to this problem. Get addicted to this problem and turn it into your life's work. And this is one final inspiration story, just to show you actually what can happen. So we did a codeathon code with Health 2.0 and Academy Health and Georgetown University in DC uh, uh, on, uh, uh, it was actually, uh, and really any topic, it was an open health data codeathon, uh, February of last year. We said, anyone who's interested in health data, learn more about health data, building stuff with health data, you're welcome to show up. I was terrified, actually, because you know, DC isn't Silicon Valley. It was gonna be on a Saturday at Georgetown in February, starting at 9.30. I was thinking to myself, well, who's gonna show up? Like, developers normally don't get up until noon, right? Who's gonna actually show up? Like, thank God all you guys showed up. Fantastic, thank you so much. And 150 people showed up. I don't know how the hell this happened, right? <laughs> Including five kids from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. I don't know how the heck they heard about this, but they, they heard about the codeathon about health data at Georgetown in DC, and they got inspired. They bought these lab coats with matching insignia. That's a Team Maya, that's what they call themselves, right? They ran in the van, got up at O Dark 100, and started driving to make it in time for it. They made it in time for the 9.30 kickoff of this Georgetown health data hackathon. They knew nothing about health and healthcare, nothing. But they just wanted to make a difference. So uh, they scrubbed into the data, and they learned about this phenomenon called food deserts, right? Which if you look at USDA data, you can see big swaths of America uh, where if you live in that area, you do not have access to affordable, healthy food. 
I don't care how good the doctors are in that area. I don't care how good the hospitals are in the area. That area is going to have a lot of problems when it comes to health. There are entire public health symposia about food deserts. There's endless academic literature about this problem. These kids had not read any of that. They had not gotten the memo about what's impossible yet. So they decided to solve the food desert problem in eight hours. And what they did is they built this, built this brilliant app, had the idea, built the app in eight hours called Food Oasis, a brilliant mashup of text messaging farmers markets. So it turns out that virtually every American, including most Americans in low-income neighborhoods, have access to text messaging. So what they did was they said, okay, you can use the Food Oasis app via text messaging to text in the fact that you want to buy five zucchini and 10 tomatoes that goes to a central website. Your neighbors can do the same. Then a network of food suppliers, food co-ops, farmers markets look at the website and circle the orders you want to fulfill and hit fulfill and text everyone back and says, I will show up at St. John's Church from 1 to 5 p.m. this Saturday with your food. Kind of like a flash farmers market, right, on a regular basis. Now, I don't know anything about the food business, but apparently if you don't need a store in the neighborhood, if you know demand entirely in advance, and if within four hours of showing up your entire inventory gets bought, the cost of food tends to drop. Yeah. <laughs> Who knew? Yeah? Yeah. So basically, this won the code thon They've been iterating, 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 right? And actually, it turns out that while these kids don't know anything about health and healthcare, they're experts in something called supply chain management and consumer experience design, right? Maya is an ideal-like company that does this kind of work in the Midwest. I went to visit their headquarters. The kids have an entire room. It's one giant whiteboard where they've mapped out in detail how they're going to systematically pressure test each component of their service and refine it until it actually works. They've actually now announced a major investment from a major American company to turn into a company. They're going to beta test in seven American cities, and they're going to rock and roll. Amazing. So I hope that a story like that emerges from today. I can't wait for you to start coding. I can't wait. I can't wait. Right? Oh, one thing for the developers, by the way, just, just, just a hint. One of the things we actually learn empirically based on data, because I love data, right? People that tend to win these things are people that tend to mash up people from different sectors, okay? It's not like the hacker working by him or herself. It's not the doctor working by him or herself. It's not the obesity expert working by him or herself. It's the mashup of the Silicon Valley renegade hacker, right? The doctor who's been actually working with patients with this issue for years, the obesity expert who mashed themselves up, who don't tend to hang out together. That's like the best part about these kinds of gatherings is they mash people up. It's people mashups. They create ingenious solutions, right? They're neither naive, right, and neither stuck in the conventional wisdom. So, Tap into the expertise of your fellow person as much as you possibly can, right? Recognize the truth of Joy's Law, right? Which is that Joy's Law, Bill Joy once said, founder of some systems, no matter who you are, you have to remember that most of the smartest people in the world work for somebody else, right? Which is, of course, true. Take advantage of that, harness that to build your solution. I look forward to taking that winning mashup team to the White House for lunch uh, or breakfast. And as you do this incredibly important work, this incredibly important work for which we're all so grateful, May the force be with you today and tomorrow. God bless you. God bless Lafayette, Louisiana, and the United States of America. Good luck. Thank you so much. We know that obesity and diabetes are incredibly intertwined. And we know that this is becoming the new norm. And it's very disturbing. I'm going to go through a little illustration here to show where we've been, if you just watch uh, the screen and you see it turn darker colors. That's the degree to which we have high rates of both obesity and diabetes. And you can see over time how it grows. And you can see where we are, maybe right in the middle of what we call the diabetes belt. And you can see it develop over time. The only state in a worse position than us. Is anyone here from Mississippi? All right, well, Mississippi is the only state that beats us on this. And over time, you're seeing how it's not just a Louisiana problem although we're a national leader in it, it's a problem for the United States. And we can't find an inflection point. But is this our destiny? Are we going to be just a darker and darker plot on the map? Or is there a point that we can turn the trend around? We're here to address health care problems, to provide solutions for it. Solutions, though, must be used in combination with our own self-discipline, our own owning our own health, where it starts from the individual. Every person here in this room today is a major player. Everyone has influence over their family, 
their community, their workplace, their congregation, it cannot stop. This is an incredible event that we're at today. It's called Cajun Code Fest. It's the first of its kind and the largest so far in the country. The grand prize is $25,000, uh, which is also the, the largest prize for something like this in the country. And we have developers from all over the world, as far away as Germany, that have come in to work on large data sets around health care conditions. And in this case, we're dealing with obesity. And their job is to come up with new and innovative applications and approaches that we could take to address our obesity problem here in the state. Where does Louisiana rank in terms of childhood obesity and gen adult obesity? Yeah, we're second uh, to the bottom, only above Mississippi. So we have a long way to go to get to the top. Uh, we want a gun for states like uh, Colorado and Washington and Oregon, uh, which have uh, much less a condition of obesity. We're really, really concerned about the level of childhood obesity, though, leading, uh, of course, to uh, childhood diabetes, which is a uh, very expensive and very debilitating disease for children. We'd like to see more activity. We'd like to see families owning their own health, doing more for eating healthy, more fruits and vegetables, smaller portions, more exercise, less TV. All of this is uh, going into the analysis and the thought by using uh, data and innovation to come up with applications to address obesity. If you have large consumption increases in meat, dairy, desserts, fried foods, and high calorie foods, if that's what your lifestyle choices are about, I can guarantee you will be overweight. So guess what, coders? We know why people are overweight. They choose these behaviors. Not any one, not any two, but the combination of these behaviors. And your challenge as coders in the Codathon is to figure out not necessarily what the data says, it's to figure out how we can use that data to get people to make choices that they might not make now. Because the choices we're making now are going to guarantee that half of our population will be obese by the year 2050 and maybe more. These are not choices like an epidemic or a pathogen. These are behavioral choices. Ramesh has pulled together as an amazing group of software coders that are looking for ways to take the data that we have all across various industries and various departments of the government and put it to work in trying to figure ways we might push against the epidemic of childhood obesity. And so what I've seen here today is a lot of smart people trying to think about ways to use information to bring ways to improve. What do you see as the values of CodeFest such as this? Well, the primary value is imagination. We need imagination and creativity if we're going to push against the pressures that are making us all and our children overweight. Without imagination, we're not going to go anywhere. So code fests like this bring together not just smart people, but teams of people who are thinking about new ways of doing things. What, why is it important that uh, events like this uh, continue to spread? Well, the road we're on is not the road we want to be on. If we don't bring together people across all different disciplines, not just doctors or scientists, but people across the whole spectrum of educators, parents, patients, teachers, et cetera, if we don't bring them together, we're going to end up in a place we don't want to go. So this is exactly the kind of thing we want to do here at the university that gets us thinking in new ways. There are a growing number of code fests, and uh, they're called code fests or hackathons or codeathons. They're happening uh, across the country around health data and health innovation. Um, uh, they're uh, uh, both um, uh, growing in number and also growing uh, in size. Each of them, uh, like this, is actually the biggest and most vibrant one I've been to yet. Uh, and what's happening is that we're seeing these codeathons produce just incredible solutions. Um, incredibly creative solutions. I think the key is, is that they bring together people that don't normally tend to hang out, right? So uh, tech hackers don't tend to hang out with doctors, right? Public health people don't tend to hang out with entrepreneurs. But when you mash them up together, right, and team them up, the joining of the brains and the hearts and the souls produces all kinds of incredibly creative thinking, right, that's neither naive nor steeped in conventional wisdom, right? It's, it's this magical kind of confluence of expertise and ideas that produces just out-of-the-box actions, out-of-the-box new uh, services and applications that can really make a difference. So I was actually describing in my talk earlier today uh, a um, app called Food Oasis uh, that came out of a hackathon that George University did uh, about a year ago. Uh, and what happened was um, uh, it was actually a, just a generic health data code file where people could just scrub in the health data and build whatever they wanted to. And there was this team of five kids that came from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, 
who were really interested uh, in making a difference. They didn't know anything about health and healthcare, uh, but they, they drove all the way from Philly to make it time for the 9.30 a.m. start on the Saturday in February. Uh, at this uh, Georgetown uh, codathon, and they, they looked at a bunch of our data, and they 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 learned about this phenomenon called food deserts, which is um, basically the phenomenon that uh, there are a bunch of areas across the country where if you live in one of those areas, you don't have access to affordable, healthy food, which is a real problem. So these kids hadn't gotten the memo about what's impossible, uh, and so they decided to solve the food desert problem in eight hours, working with health experts who were actually there at the at the uh, codathon, and they invented this app. They built a working version of this app in eight hours called Food Oasis. Uh, which is a mashup of text messaging and farmers markets. So essentially what happens is if you have access to text messaging, which virtually every American does now, right, you can text in the food oasis that you're interested in buying five zucchini and five tomatoes. Your neighbors do the same. It goes to a central website where a network of food suppliers like farmers markets, food co-ops, et cetera, can look at all the orders, circle the ones they're going to fulfill, hit fulfill, and text everyone back, right, uh, in that order set saying show up at St. John's Church from 1 to 5 p.m. this Saturday and I'll have your food. It's kind of like a flash farmers market, if you will, that kind of forms like on the spot. And because you don't need physical stores and because you, you as a food supplier, no demand entirely in advance, right? And because within four hours of you showing up, all your food gets bought completely, right? Um, it, it drops the cost of food by a ton, right? So this, this team of kids, uh, who actually it turns out are experts in supply chain management and consumer experience design, <laughs> which uh, healthcare needs a lot more of, right? Uh, they've now actually gotten funding from a, a big American company, uh, turned it into a real company. Uh, and uh, are beta testing it in uh, several American cities. It's very exciting, you know, and so, um, so my, my great hope is that there'll be a similar story or stories that come out of the Cajun Code Fest, right, where uh, there'll, there'll be a winning team or teams that even if they don't win, produce something amazing, right, they turn into companies right here in Lafayette, right, that can both help contribute to the fight against child obesity nationally uh, and also create jobs, great jobs here in Louisiana, here in Lafayette at the same time. What's your reaction to everything that you've seen here today? I'm stunned. <laughs> this is my first time in Lafayette, and Lafayette is the place to be. I think the hottest spot at this second to be, if you're interested in healthcare, health improvement, data, tech, innovation, entrepreneurship, is Lafayette, Louisiana. I could not be more excited to be here. Speechless, fabulous. Uh, we are just beginning to get started, as a matter of fact, but what an incredible way to start the first Cajun Code Fest. I mean, we have the Chief Technology Officer of the United States and folks from across the world that have come here, a guy from Germany who joined a team here uh, because he wants to uh, be part of a team that wins the cash prize, but more importantly, he wants to start a technology company in Louisiana based on his idea. And he's just one of the many. We have 116, 118 uh, members in, a, in teams that are going to be competing over the next 24 hours. They're going to be producing products and maybe, just maybe, the most innovative solution that we need as a society to address the issue of childhood obesity. So we're thrilled. We couldn't have, we couldn't have asked for a better start. And uh, with the Chief Technology Officer of the United States and the Secretary of the uh, Todd Park and Bruce Greenstein, the Secretary of the Department of Health and Hospitals, setting the stage with some of the best minds in the nation, with Jay Walker from TedMed, Sean Nolan from Microsoft, Jared Kaiser from Intel, and Derek Scott from AT&T, painting their vision, painting a picture, and now the rest of the teams, 115 to 200 folks, are going to work to produce the next best innovation that may have the answer to what we are all looking for, which is solutions, innovative solutions to child obesity that we face as a civilization. There certainly is a lot of energy and creativity and, and uh, innovation and a lot of excitement, and it really is a, an enthusiastic uh, environment, and it was really exciting to come in here this morning.